Okay, so before we even think about getting started here today, I'm just gonna say this video is mostly a joke, it's not a legit criticism. And it does make me a little bit sad that I have to have a disclaimer like this, but honestly, if not, people would think I am being very serious here, as opposed to being a little bit tongue-in-cheek and slightly critical. But regardless, let's continue. So, the other day, I was sitting around watching an episode of Miraculous, you know, as you do, Animan, I think it was. And as I sat there, listening to the theme song, hearing Marinette's voice, I honed in on something. I'm Marinette, just a normal girl with a normal life. Normal. And you know, super heroics aside, to me this pretty much gets you in the mindset of who this character is. The everyman character, or the every woman in this case. Set up to be pretty generic so that anybody can identify with it, but my goodness, the more I thought about it, the more sure I became. Asterisk has pulled the wool over our eyes. He's pulled a fast one. Marinette is not a relatable character at all, or at least not very relatable to me. And right now you might be rolling your eyes at me thinking to yourself, Oh, uh, uh, yeah, really? You don't find a teenage girl from Friends relatable, smarty pants? You're in your 20s, mate. Get a grip. And yeah, on the surface, I would agree with you right there. It would be difficult to relate to that. But that's not what I'm finding so silly about all of this. It's that somehow, Asterix has managed to convince us that Marinette is an everywoman character. A generic nobody declaring that Marinette is our normal girl with a normal life, who then moonlights as a superhero. When in fact, she's not normal. She's only a couple steps below a trust fund baby. And so are many of her friends. They're well connected, they're successful, and they're constantly rubbing elbows with the rich and famous and talented. Your standard pleb, she ain't. And whilst I don't mind that, I do think it's kind of funny that the show pretends that she's just this normal nobody. Pretends that her whole vibe is pretty much like Spider-Man, a genius, talented character who comes from a humble background. At least, in the films, that's the case. But in reality, she's more akin to Bruce Wayne. Although, many, 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 many orders of magnitude less wealthy than Batman, of course. I mean, just look at her life, right? She's pretty rich. For starters, her parents own a bakery in Paris, and you might be thinking, so? Doesn't mean they're rich. And I would agree with you in principle. The only hitch here being is that it seems to be the most successful bakery in Paris, at least according to the show, and I'm not sure if they ever actually openly state this as fact, but somewhere in my memory I think I do recall something to that effect. But regardless, literally everybody seems to go here. We see mega stars like Jagged Stone. I'm pretty sure Gabe orders food from here at one point. The mayor comes here. They get hired as caterers for the release of the Ladybug and Cat Noir animated film. In one episode, and I think it's the episode where they make that food for Epiphany, they literally have lines out the door. They are in demand! And you have to think that all of this, coupled with the fact that they only work for themselves and they don't have an apprentice or an employee, would have had to have led to some fairly lucrative financial success. After all, does Marinette's paternal grandma not spend most of her time biking across the world, like literal years worth of time? If she's capable of doing that, you'd think she'd have to have some serious savings. I mean, yeah, she might be travelling for cheap, but eventually, over the years, cost would add up. So suddenly, we've gone from successful baker to suggestions of generational wealth. I mean, maybe this bakery's been the top dog from even before Sabine and Tom revolutionised the baking process and altered the recipe. Other examples include splurging on last minute plane tickets to Shanghai on a whim just because Marinette wanted to go. And Marinette straight up has enough personal money to buy gifts for Adrian for literally every occasion. And a lot of those gifts do seem expensive. But that's not all. Because don't forget, her mother's side of the family also seems loaded too, after all. Is Wang not a fairly successful chef with a nice big restaurant in Shanghai that he operates and lives in? In the special, they openly state that he is very successful. So, if you ask me, Marinette, the only descendant of both sides of the family, Looks like she's going to be inheriting some big bucks all around. And on top of that, I assume she actually got paid for some of those commissions we've seen in the show, right? Like the work she did for Jagged Stone and for Gabe. Wasn't she in a music video at some point? Pretty sure you have to get paid for that. It's not like that was a student film. And like, maybe she's not earning mega bucks for that, but surely she was given some money. And any amount's quite a lot for a teenager of her age. So yes, I would say that she is quite rich indeed. But you get thrown off the scent because her home is sort of modest. They don't seem to splash their cash. They just seem to have it all in bank accounts and investments. Ah, oh, bastards. They probably have investment properties in the countryside. You get thrown off the scent because she goes to a... I'm pretty sure it's just a normal school, right? I could have sworn it was like an art or fashion school in season one, but... 
the more you see it, the more it just seems like it's a normal public school. And I mean, this is a deception because realistically a person in her tax bracket, she's going to a posh school. I know, I went to a posh school. Not one with billionaires like Adrian and Chloe, but ones where the richest people were people like Marinette. And having been to some of their houses, holy shit, they're actually quite rich. But like I said, they put her in a public school. They have characters like Chloe and Adrian who are mega, mega rich with Chloe actively looking down on her and telling her she's poor. And then you have her modest lifestyle. When in reality, she's far more privileged than the show wants you to believe. And then on top of that, remember this. Not only is she rich as all hell, but she also rubs elbows with the rich, the famous, the prominent, and the talented. I mean, we already know that she's worked for both Gabe and for Jagged Stone. And on top of that, she babysits the daughter of Paris's most prominent TV journalist. And that's just shit off the top of my head. I'm sure you could find more if you sift through every episode, but honestly, I couldn't be bothered doing that. And I'm very certain there's more of that kind of thing. But now, I just want to hone in on her peer group, as in people from her school that she personally knows. For starters, in her class, we have world-famous model Adrian Agrest, who is the son of, well, he's got to be billionaire, Gabriel Agrest, a billionaire fashion designer and tech mogul. And they live in a huge mansion in Paris. And through Adrian, she also has contact with Felix, who's very much in a similar situation to Adrian and seems to be one of those mega rich high society types. Oh, and Marinette's on her way to dating Adrian. And you don't need your wand, wizard hat and crystal ball to predict that they're our end game pairing. And what do you know? Adrian is Gabe's only child, so her wealth will grow. Furthermore, her longtime nemesis is Chloe Bourgeois, the daughter of more millionaires. Audrey, who's a big name fashion designer, and Andre, who's a hotel owner and the mayor of Paris. So he's rich, he's powerful, he's well connected. And yeah, his hotel seems to cater to the upper crust. They host Jagged Stone and Prince Ali. So they are clearly loaded. Next up, there's Marinette's best pal, Alia. Her mum works as the head chef at the aforementioned hotel. And honestly, I don't know how much chefs make, but being the top dog in a hotel like that, surely more than pays the bills, right? Surely they couldn't be underpaying to that degree, right? Like, I literally know nothing about chefery. Chefery? Is that a word? Anyway, Julika. She is literally the daughter of Jagged Stone, and even if he pissed off and never had contact with her until she was a teenager, the family's doing just fine. So either the royalties from her mum's pop star days are good, or Papa's child support check is nice and hefty. Or maybe the mum's job is just very lucrative. Because holy hell, they live on a houseboat. And like, not just a little dinky normal houseboat, but a full-on luxury-style party barge. You know, the kind of things that rich teenagers hire in movies and shit. And you know, I've just had a quick Google search to confirm, and yes, indeed, houseboats are very expensive, especially ones like that. So, she is also loaded. Milen, mm, she's less rich and famous, I reckon. But her dad is breaking into stage roles with his mime show. I don't know what the ceiling is for miming, but... You know, maybe he'll be famous one day. So there's that. And Max, he might not have the same financial background. We don't really know. All we know is his mum is now an astronaut. So she has to be pretty damn smart. But I mean, she's clearly just an idiot child compared to Mr. I built a sentient robot in my bedroom Max. But yeah, she must still be smart. Just not compared to him. And so yeah, Max is clearly going to be the next Elon Musk in this world. Sorry, but it's true. He invented Markov. The only feat in the show as impressive as inventing Markov, the sentient robot who is a super genius, is the woman who somehow brought dinosaurs back to life. Although, I'm pretty sure it is mentioned overtly that Markov majorly helped her with that. And so, of course, since Max made Markov, he also brought back the dinosaurs in part. So, there you go. So, she's also school friends with a future billionaire. On top of that, she knows Alex, whose dad seems to be the big cheese at the Louvre, so... Don't know how much money that equates to, but it certainly feels prestigious. Like, that's some high society shit. Then we have Sabrina, whose dad is a cop, but like, I swear the dude's the chief of police. I know they never really say something like that, but he's calling in full-on SWAT teams and helicopters. Did he call in the army at one point, or was that the mayor? Either way, he has a lot of authority for your average officer. The dude is clearly not some average boy in blue. On top of that, we just have to scatter across to Miss Mendeleev's class. We have two TV weather presenters and Zoe, who is also the daughter of mega rich Audrey and another, you know, rich guy. Who knows? But I assume her dad's also loaded. Oh, and there's also Kagami, one of her friends. And she's the daughter of a multi-millionaire, perhaps a billionaire. And Luke is in the same boat as Julika. <laughs> 
Same boat. <laughs> and I mean, shit, this school even had fake Thomas Asterisk. And in this world, he's a very famous director. So clearly, you know, this is a public school. Public school, inverted commas. But realistically, it's a school that is actually a who's who for the future upper crust of French society. With all of them just living out their superhero fantasies. And I don't really know why I made this video. I don't know why I'm ranting about this. All I know is that Marinette is not a normal girl. and She does not have a normal life. This kid ain't gonna be working at McDonald's to pay her bills during university. Piss off. She's not struggling and she never will be. And ever since I figured this out, every time I hear that stupid line in the intro, I won't lie, I get a little bit salty. Cause, you know, no Marinette, just no. Just cause she wasn't invited to the diamond ball or whatever that was, doesn't mean she ain't richer than almost everybody I personally know. And I kind of find it amusing, in a way, that they're trying to act like this sort of wealth, privilege and prominence is a completely normal thing for a teenager to go through. And I, you know, I'll press X to doubt that one, mate. And on top of that, it also kind of feels slightly out of touch and a touch degrading. Like, not enough to make me actively pissed off, but enough that I had to get this out so I can go back to my blissful ignorance stage and just laugh at the absurdity of it all. Anyway, that's pretty much all I have to say. And so I will remind you that these have just been my opinions and now I'd like to hear yours. What do you think about all this? Am I delusional here or am I making some actual sense? She is rich, right? Right? They pretty much all are. Like a bunch of rich kids cosplaying as working class slash middle class with your token mega rich characters tossed in. Ugh. Anyway, with all that being said, I'm curious for your thoughts, so make sure to like, comment, and subscribe and let me know.